In this video today, I have a lot of information to go over. I only sold five postcards, which is great because the special topic today is real photo postcards. It, it's just a lot of information. It's taken me a while to get it all sorted out to make sure I can deliver it in a way to take the mystery out of these very highly sought after cards. <clears throat> then I have another poll from the Saturday polls. It's what is your handling time for postcards? I wanted to see what people said that they do handling time. And then I got viewer comments. These are special comments from other YouTube creators that have postcard channels. And they left comments. So I went through and I picked out th the three comments I found from the other creators. And well, I'll go over those at the end of the video. But I want to get going here because uh, there's just so much important information I want to get out. So let me go ahead and start with the what sold. And so the first card that sold on eBay is just a view card of the National Forest, Sawtooth National Forest. Right there, it's just a chrome card. So someone likes that, four to five dollars. The next one's a little close to home to me. I'm only about 55 miles south of Chicago. There's the Lions at the Art Institute on Michigan Avenue. That's one of them right there. Vertical card, older card on there. And this was a Hammond, B.O. Hammond Publishing. So right up there is a little symbol. Sometimes you can date cards using those. Then I, of course, got to have a video. I got to sell these naval ships. Had a guy bought two of these bigger prints. This is the Westchester, USS Westchester. He bought two of these. Uh, these will be put into a eBay standard envelope. They each get a separate sleeve. And these are cut where they would go into a continental sleeve. So I'd be able to put them in there. And they'll go for one ounce for 53 cents from eBay standard envelope. And the last card that sold, and then I'll get into RPPC. So this is something, I'm not, Dade County Art Museum. It's James Deering's Empire Bathroom. So I sold a postcard of a picture of a bathroom in a museum. I, oh, that's the toilet, I think, right back there. When I put these up, I art sells any kind of art cards, but they take a while. But, you know, people that collect postcards are sometimes in the art, and this sold 4 to $5. So that was five cards, you know, $20 in sales. S don't get discouraged. Some days you might not sell any cards. Uh, some days you sell 20, 30 cards. Some days you sell five cards. Uh, with that, and, you know, I just reached yesterday 26,000 listings on eBay. Now I have 4,000 on Etsy, so it's about 30,000 cards. And I only sold four card, five cards today, four individual cards, because I got two ships. You never know. You really can't push people to go out there and do that, but if you got good photos, good titles, a price to sell, and a good variety of cards, you have a better chance sometimes than the other ones. But let me get into RPPC, Real Photo Postcards. <clears throat> these are, I don't do a lot of these, but I do do them when I see them and I pick them up and I do more research on these probably than any other card. But what is Real Photo Postcard or RPPC? I'll put it right down here so we can go through these terms. There's a lot of information here, so if you have to back up and rewind on the YouTube, uh, would be great that, and do some screenshots or whatever. But Real Photo Postcard, RPPC as they're called, is a term to distinguish the commercially printed photographic images and an actual photograph. So it's between a commercially printed photographic images and an actual photograph. Printed on photograph paper with a pre-printed postcard back. What do they mean by pre-printed postcard back? Now, in one of my earlier videos, I did some term terms, and one of them was postcard back. And here's what that is. For a postcard to be considered a postcard, it must have a postcard back, which includes traditional features, such as a stamp box, right up in the corner, a back label, right back here, divided back line or information which indicates the address area over here. So there's three things on a postcard 
for it to be a true postcard per the technical information from the Deltiology Delphi part of things. Deltiology is the study of postcards, the collecting of postcards. It's stamp box, back label, divided back line, or information to indicate where the address area is. And why do you have that? Because there was undivided backs, and all you, on the back all you could do is put the address. But that's what a postcard back does. Real photo postcards are more are more thought after than commercially printed postcards. Collectors and historical societies look for RPPCs more than postcards. They want to see what the scene looked like in 1907 and what it looks like today. Uh, instead of the printed ones, they'll get the, they want history. They want the real photo postcards. Vintage photographs of people are some of the most interesting postcards available. Photos also often capture people in their finest dress or finest moments in their lives. Things in photos can also be of interest, including people. Here's a family. And there's some silvering on this uh, photo as well, as you can see the little blur. Uh, just the way they focused the cameras back then, sometimes that's how you can tell if there are photographs sometimes too. But here's a family. There's a gentleman, wife, and two kids all dressed up in the backyard, and, and they took a picture. And I'll explain a little bit more about how those types of photos came about. And then you got one here of a boxer that's signed. So he was a boxer in the early 1900s. And some other things in photos is like toys from the, those uh, early 1900 days. This is a little boy in his yard with a little rocking horse. If you notice down in the corner there on his left side, there's a little rocking horse. And one of the bigger things people look at, because they can date them real well, is cars, automobiles, transportation. This here is a real faded out photo, real photo postcard. But you can see they're on the top of the hill that drove the car up there and there. So people, toys, cars, subjects, uh, scenes, main streets uh, are the things that people look for in their real photo postcards. Now, in the early 1800s, 1900s, cabinet cards were the thing. Those are those big heavy cards. They took a picture of Grandma and Grandpa and they put them up in a cabinet, uh, tin plates and stuff like that. But they were sometimes expensive to do and they were done on glass negatives and stuff. I won't get too much into the cabinet cards, but they do sell um, on there. Interesting one with mustaches and different things like that. I've seen people sell those. I don't do too many of those. I usually lot them up and sell them at the flea market. But George Easton, Kodak is the most responsible for the development of the real photo postcards. He invented a camera around 1903 also that would take photos the same size as postcards around 1906. He also offered a free a fee-based service where you could print out uh, your pictures on the postcards. So this camera here is where people can t go and take like that photo of that family in the backyard. They didn't need to have a professional photographer. They can take individual shots. They uh, People come into town with the camera and they'll take a picture of different places and sell those on the as postcards to the people. And then they'll travel to another town. And they use these cameras. Uh, but sometimes that, that was kind of expensive. But with these cameras, uh, he would develop the, phone, the film onto the postcard back paper, photographic paper. So people now could afford to take photos and get them printed in the postcards. So that was around 1906, and this camera was invented around 1903. But there, it's a folding camera, so they could carry them and bring them with them uh, on there. And you see a lot of those on eBay or at flea markets and stuff like that as these cameras. Now, real photo postcards are often abbreviated with RPPC, and I've also seen where they have RP. But most prevalently, I see as RPPC, real photo postcards. The majority of real photos are one of a kind. While commercially printed photographs were produced in large quantity, so if a, real photos were printed, they could do those on those fast presses, those high speed presses, and just do tons of them like that. But most of them, the most desirable ones are the one of a kind. They were normally produced in small batches from original negative by an individual or local store. They were not printed. So real photo postcards were not printed. 
most RPPCs made by smaller studios didn't have any text in there to put, like some of the commercially done ones, Chromes and stuff, where they put text on the pictures and stuff like that to identify their images because it was expensive to do back then. But a cheaper alternative to printed text was the use of exposing text directly onto the photograph negative. And those are the white letters that you see on a lot of real photo postcards. And here's a couple examples. This one is a wartime, uh, some soldier being carried off. But if you look down in the bottom left, you'll see the white. So they, they wrote on the negative, and then when they develop it, it comes out there. So that was real inexpensive to do instead of changing the image. Now here's another one of a parade, a military parade, and in the bottom right, there's some white lettering. So that was a cheaper alternative to printed text on the picture, is to expose it on the negative by with this white here. But those are two real photo postcards. Now modern postcard printing processes recreate photos using dots or pixels, like in a newspaper photo. Actual developed photographs do not have dots. This is probably one of the most questions I get about real photo postcards. How do you tell? And I'm going to walk you through uh, some of the things here that you can use to tell if it's been printed or if it's a real photo. And remember, printing has dots and pixels. Photographs, developed photographs, do not have dots. And the best way to tell the difference is to look at the postcard with a magnifying glass. And now I superimposed, I found this image that I thought was pretty good to kind of show you what it would look like on our magnifying glass. Now it might look a little different, might have little lines in there or whatever, but here on the right side is a clear no dots. And then you get into the dots a little bit more and then you get into the black and white dots. That's what it's going to look like if it's been printed. The one on the right is what it's going to look like kind of if it's a photograph. There's no dots. So that's what you want to look for and I hope this helps you. Uh, it's kind of a, you know, enlarged to what it would look like. But if you, the best way to do it is go get a newspaper, look at a photo under the magnifying glass, and then go get a postcard and look at that, you know, and just see if you can tell the difference between the two and practice with it. But that's probably if you ask any postcard collector and stuff how to tell right away is get a magnifying glass and look for the dots. Now, there are some fake RPPCs out there. They've taken a photograph and they re-glued it to old backs or a postcard back and said photos on there. Be careful. Just because it says po photo postcard, it might not be. If a duck looks like a duck, it might not be a duck. I don't see a lot of those, um, but in the day, there's, there's always a scam or something people will do on there. So you always want to keep on the lookout, just like purses or shoes. You want to get to know what to look for. And how you do that, you go out there and get experience, and that's skill. So skill and experience are, you know, is what it takes. And just going through them. Now to date RPPCs, I won't get into that here, but there's a website, playle.com, has a ton of information, more than I could even explain here. They have the paper uh, stuff on there. And stuff like that so I'll put that link in in the description below if you want to get more detailed with them there's also stamp boxes you can look at there you want to find if you got a store on a main street there's also Facebook groups if you put an RPPC out there they'll help you with that I wouldn't flood them with it but if you got one that you think you have a real good important one you can put it out there but RPPC there's a whole market a whole collector field about those and you would not believe there could be a water tower in a field somewhere and I've seen them identify where that was it, it's just amazing but it does take a little bit of research now just because you get you know an RPPC postcard doesn't mean you got paper gold it's all about the subject it's all about the scene um, where it was who did it if you can identify stuff um, on there a lot of people think that when they get RPPCs you know they're worth tons of money but how many RPPCs are out there so let me just give you an example here this is hip postcards right on their banner that they put across their website they say they have 150,000 real photo postcards listed for sale on their site 
Then I went into eBay search and I just typed in RPPC. I didn't type in anything more than that. And it comes up with 471,000 postcards. So there's just between those two sites, there's a half a million RPPCs out there. And you could probably triple, quadruple more than that number uh, on stuff uh, out there. But that just goes to show you just having an RPPC doesn't mean it's worth a lot of money because there's a lot of them out there. You still want to do your research and see it. But while we're talking about it, let's get into the pricing. What What is the prices of RPPCs? As I always do, I went out to eBay. I sorted the solds uh, high and low. And here's the highs. Some of these RPPCs can demand a lot of money if you can verify what they are and stuff. So this first one is a Civil War General, Davis, Doylestown, Pennsylvania, $500 plus $14 shipping. Next one was Ethel Waters Photo, 1930s. They were able to date it. They took an offer, $10 shipping. Then there was another boxer, vintage boxer, postcard, RPPC. It looks like they knew the guy, $500. $10 shipping, they probably ship for priority. So you can see if you can get the subject, the names and the titles and verify who they are, they can demand the money if it's a thought after card or a rare card. But now let's look at the low. What's sold low? Here's your extreme again. This is uh, two uh, RPPCs, Cambridge of Vermont, pair of RPPCs, old smuggler stuff, $1.19, free shipping. I don't know if there's any money left in that. And then the next one is Deer Hunters. From uh, circa 1910. Dollar twenty-nine. Free shipping. That's not a lot of money. And then here's in uh, some kind of Minnesota or pictures or something. Dollar twenty-nine. So you go from five hundred dollars to a dollar twenty-nine. So that's why it's so important with these are RPPCs, these real photo postcards, to see what you got. Now I do have a lot of the RPPCs with the ships, but they're naval ships. They sell between, you know, four to eight dollars um, on there. Is there a naval ship that's probably more sought after? But I have so many of them, and I just want to make sure um, I do true to the club that had these before. Is get them out to the people with a good price, affordable price. I haven't found any of the ship cards, naval ship cards, that are worth $500 uh, on there. Um, but I have run across some RPPCs that I've uh, sold for $30, $40. I sold one at a flea market uh, for $65. It was the local town, and I was doing, I was set up at a Gladiola Festival, and this was actually almost the same picture of where I was set up right across the little river there, and I put it on the table, and uh, we sold that. I had to split it with my father-in-law, but, you know, the right place, right people on there. Now, I always like to look at the listed, just to verify with the postcards. So, listed high on eBay. Now, here's some postcards. Here's a two, four, six, seven postcards for $900, plus $13 shipping. And these were World War II Marine uh, photos. Another one was something, I'm not for sure, um, Eberhardt or whatever, $900. And then here's a real photo, a rare they say, and I never use rare or vintage in my titles. I, I don't know if eBay strips those out, but any real photo postcard is going to be vintage. But RMS Lusitana, I think this was one of those, the ship that got bombed, you know, torpedoed. So if this is the real postcard, and there's 40 eight watchers on that one so that's a desirable card on there the other ones didn't say any watchers but Lusitan Lusitania that's a neat card just like Titanic White Star Lines and stuff like that so that's what you want to look for if you want to get into that area of postcards you really don't need to know a lot about the real photo postcard as much as you do the subject and picture first and then you get into to make sure and you verify it's a real photo postcard by looking at it checking all the things, make sure, you know, wasn't glued on and stuff on there. Got any questions? Put it down in the comments. I'll see if I can answer them. But that's Real Photo Postcards, RPPCs.
to now. Now since I got all the what sold cards done, uh, cards that sold, I'm going to jump right into this little poll here. And every Saturday morning I put out a poll about 9 o'clock with different real quick questions. They're anonymous. I don't know who picks what. It doesn't give me that information. But this poll was, what is your handling time for mailing out postcards? Does it really make a difference? I, I think it does um, in some things. But there was 40 votes on this poll. So we got a good uh, number of people for the number of people uh, that are subscribed to the channel. But 63% are shipping their postcards out in one day. 28% was two days. 5% was three days. And 5% were four plus. One day is great. People nowadays are expecting their stuff sooner. Just like Amazon, one day delivery and stuff like that. The two day isn't bad. That's where I'm at. I do a two day now. Uh, for toys and stuff like that. And it, I, I made that change a while ago. Hasn't affected sales in any of the stores. But I do still ship out in one day. Whatever sells today will ship out tomorrow. Uh, if the post office is open. So, But I have that little buffer. We've had a lot of temps uh, in the carriers. Uh, they've missed a few times. And I figure I just wanted that extra day. In case something comes in or something comes up. But two, one or two day, I think, is the best. I've, I've ordered postcards, and then the people have waited like four or five, six days to even ship it. You know, it, yeah, I only paid $6 for the card, but people are looking for it. But three day, it depends on what you do. If you got a full-time job, you got 10 kids, and you got things going on, you got elderly parents to take care of, you might not be able to do that uh, one or two day. You might have to go to three days, and that's fine. You... you don't get a crazy, you know, uh, stress over it. Three days will still sell. It's whatever you can do. And if you got good cards, people are going to wait. I mean, there. But when you get the four plus, uh, you know, some people say I only ship once a week. I think they need to take a look at that. If they really are serious about it and they wanted to sell and make a little bit more money and move some more cards, they should get down in the two to one day. And three, if it depends if there's other things on there. Some people have, you know, health problems. They work out of state. They travel a lot uh, on there. But that would be a hard sell uh, for some people. But postcard people, are uh, collectors are patient. And if you spell it out well and they understand it, you communicate, you can probably get away with it. But I stick with the two-day right now. I, I feel comfortable with that. I did one day for a long, long, long time. And uh, I downsized the toy store, and I'm basically focusing on that. I like the two days, but I still ship out every day normally, uh, six days a week. Uh, anything sells today goes out tomorrow. Now, during the holidays, I was putting them in the mailbox for pickup, and then also about three or four in the afternoon, if I sold any, I would uh, just drop them in the blue box at the post office just to get that extra time in to make sure the cards go. Now, when things settle back down a little bit, I'll go back and just put them in the mailbox every morning. But that that's the polls. If you got any questions about the polls, leave them in the comments. But I'll, I'll try to bring them up and it helps with the discussion on there. But handling time is important. People do look at that. Especially when it says eBay estimates those dates when it'll be delivered. People look at that. And I've had people forgot that they bought a card and they stuck it in their mail or whatever. But let's get into viewer comments. I picked out three comments from three YouTube creators that have postcard reselling channels as well that uh, talk about postcards. And I wanted to put them there to highlight the community that we got building in the YouTube world and the postcard collecting. The first one came from Matt and his uh, channel and his store is Jackass Retro. So he does a lot of different things. He sells a lot of different uh, retro stuff. He'll sell anything, pretty much. But Matt has a morning show every day on his channel where he's packing his stuff up that he sold the day before. And in there, in the live chat, is a lot of postcard sellers. It's a good place to go in and chat uh, about postcards and then also see what Matt's selling and stuff like that. But Matt watched the video on the table that I did a lot of math and numbers in, you know, number of cards, square footage, and he came out and he said, I was told there would be no math.
But he really liked a table, though. And we'll totally keep it in mind for the next move and shuffle. Matt just did a redo of his postcards on there, and he spent days and days uh, reorganizing. And then he's uh, really grown in the postcards, and he's thinking about doing something different again. So always keep your mind open on how things are done. And, you know, if you got a hybrid way of doing it, it's fine. But like I said in that video, most postcard resellers will change up their inventory two to three times. And I did the same. So check out Matt over at Jackass Retro. Now the next person is Julie. Julie's a subscriber to this channel, and she has a channel. It's called Julie uh, Norman on YouTube, and she sell, resells postcards as well and some other ephemera. Her comment was interesting that the value of these cards aren't very high. And this is about the ver uh, video for the exaggeration postcards or tall tail postcards with the big apples and big fish. So she says, interesting that the value of these cards aren't very high. Maybe they'll, they'll go in my antique booth instead of online. Now on my question and answer of that video, she said she had a postcard that was over $20, and the first option eBay gave her for shipping was media mail. It should, it should have been first class, so always check. So what she's saying, always check before you press the button when you ship to make sure you got the right thing you need to do. An eBay standard limit envelope has a limit on, if it's $20 or above $20, you can't use that service for that. Uh, it, it'll be grayed out. And it gave her media mail, which is the slowest, and it should have been first class. So she double checked that. She just wanted to remind everyone. But Julie's channel's over there. Go check her out. And then we got the OG of postcard collectors. John from Popeye's Postcards. He came in and watched the video. He's got a YouTube channel up again. And he has Popeye's Postcard Store. John's been selling since the late 90s. Has a lot of knowledge, knowledge uh, that you want to tap into. He's on Matt's channel most of the time in the morning. So if there's any questions. But go check his channel out. His question was, and this was about the table video for where I store 8,000 postcards and five square feet. He said, I had that exact table sitting in my Amazon cart for the month, for the past month. He was thinking of using it in his antique booth. Thanks for the review. Now, all three of these channels, we all talk about postcards, but we all do them a little different. And we do our channels a little different, do the stores a little different, we price differently. So these three people here, you want to go out and support them and go subscribe to their channels and stuff like that. And you can find their eBay stores on there. And I'll leave the links to their channels in there. But supporting YouTube channels by subscribing in 2022. YouTube people, that's, uh, subscribers is one way that they gauge what they do and also the people and the views. So if you can support the YouTube channels, it helps... Um, us to keep creating content like this and watching you get a lot of information real life information sometimes but with the RPPCs that we talked about I didn't get too much into dating them you can do it it's not hard but you need to learn a few things and I walked through uh, the five tips in this video here on dating postcards so after watching this check this video out it, it should help you date postcards that's all I got for today Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in a